Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Posterior fossa craniotomy for brain tumors. Introduction. Brain tumors located near the bottom of the skull are a serious condition that can affect many body functions and may also lead to death. Doctors usually recommend surgery for a brain tumor. The operation to remove a brain tumor located near the bottom of the skull is known as posterior fossa craniotomy and tumor removal. The decision whether or not to have the surgery is yours. This patient education program will help you understand the condition as well as the benefits and risks of this surgery. Anatomy the brain has two main parts. The cerebrum is the biggest part and is located in the upper area of the skull. It is very important for thinking, speaking, seeing, understanding, and starting movement. The cerebellum is much smaller. It is very important for balance and coordination. It is located in the lower part of the skull in an area known as the posterior fossa. The cerebrum Cerebellum and spinal cord are connected by the brainstem. The brainstem is located in front of the cerebellum. The spinal cord sends messages from the brain to the rest of the body. It also sends messages from the body to the brain about different sensations such as pain, temperature, and touch. The brain, including the cerebrum and cerebellum, and the spinal cord are surrounded by a clear fluid. This fluid is known as cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, shown in blue in this illustration. The brain, spinal cord, and CSF are covered by a membrane known as dura. This membrane protects the brain and spinal cord and prevents the fluid from leaking. Brain tumors in the posterior fossa can start in the brain itself. These are known as primary tumors. Others can come from other places in the body. For example, lung cancer can spread to the cerebellum. This type of cancer is known as metastatic. Infections in the cerebellum, known as abscesses, may sometimes look like a tumor. They may be taken out in a similar way as a tumor. Symptoms and their causes Brain tumors can sometimes happen in the posterior fossa area. These tumors are often malignant or cancerous. The area of the posterior fossa is very small. If a tumor grows there, it can block the flow of CSF and can also put pressure on the cerebellum, brainstem, or upper spinal cord. For some people, the pressure may cause severe headaches in the back part of the head. The pressure could also cause weakness, upset stomach, paralysis, numbness, and problems with the bowels or bladder. Sometimes these brain tumors can cause damage to nerves and cause problems with the muscles of the face, hearing, and vision. These tumors can affect balance, making a person unable to walk or use their arms well. Tumors in the posterior fossa can cause problems with the way CSF moves. This may lead to a condition called hydrocephalus, which means water on the brain. If the CSF is not moving properly, it could build up in the brain and cause brain damage, intellectual disability, severe headaches, and possibly death. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Diagnosis a tumor in the posterior fossa is best diagnosed using an MRI. An MRI is a test that shows structures inside the body. An MRI can show the exact location of a tumor. The following is a photo of an MRI showing a tumor in the posterior fossa. 
alternative treatments. A drain may be needed to relieve the pressure the tumor can put on the brain. When a tumor is found, an operation is often needed for two reasons. The first reason is to get samples of the tumor to be looked at by the pathologist who will identify the type of tumor. This information will help in determining if further treatment is needed. The second reason for surgery is to take out as much of the tumor as is safely possible to get rid of the symptoms. After finding out the nature of the tumor, radiation and or chemotherapy may be needed to control the tumor. Procedure The aim of posterior fossa craniotomy is to remove the brain tumor and get rid of the pressure on the cerebellum, spinal cord, and brainstem. The operation is known as posterior fossa craniotomy and tumor removal. Posterior fossa is the name of the lower part of the skull where the cerebellum is. Craniotomy means drilling bone out from the skull. This operation is done under general anesthesia. You will be placed on the operating room table face down. Some surgeons do this operation with the patient in the sitting position. The hair on the back part of your head and neck will then be clipped and cleaned. Your surgeon will make an incision down to the back part of the skull. Enough bone will then be removed from the back part of the skull to give the surgeon enough room to take the tumor out. The dura will then be opened up. Your surgeon will find the tumor and take it out. Sometimes this is done with the help of a microscope. At the end of the operation, your surgeon may try to close the dura. Sometimes this is not possible, and the surgeon either will place a patch over the dura or leave the dura open a little. Your doctor will decide if he or she wants to replace the bone. The muscle covering the posterior fossa will then be closed. Then the skin incision will be closed. Even though the bone may not be replaced, the muscle in that area is very thick and does protect the brain that is under it. Risks and Complications The surgery is relatively safe. There are, however, several possible risks and complications. These are unlikely, but possible. You need to know about them just in case they happen. By being informed, you may be able to help your doctor detect complications early. The risks and complications include those related to anesthesia, those related to any surgery, and those specific to this procedure. Risks of general anesthesia include nausea, vomiting, inability to urinate normally, cut lips, chipped teeth, sore throat, and headache. More serious risks of general anesthesia include heart attack, stroke, and pneumonia. Your anesthesiologist will discuss these risks with you and ask you if you are allergic to certain medications. Blood clots in the legs can occur due to inactivity during and after the surgery. If they happen, blood clots usually show up a few days after surgery. They cause the leg to swell and hurt. Blood clots can become dislodged from the leg and go to the lungs, where they will cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and possibly death. Sometimes the shortness of breath can happen without warning. It is extremely important to let your doctors know if any of these symptoms occur. Getting out of bed shortly after surgery may help decrease the risk of blood clots in the legs. Some of the risks are seen in any type of surgery. These include infection, bleeding, and skin scars. Deep infections may involve the brain or the fluid that circulates around the spinal cord and brain. This is known as meningitis. Treating deep infections may require long-term antibiotics and possibly another operation. Bleeding may occur during or after the operation. In extremely rare cases, this bleeding may make you need a blood transfusion and another operation to remove the blood clots. Skin scars may be visible after the procedure, and they may be painful. 
Other risks and complications are related specifically to the surgery. These are also rare. However, it is important to know about them. Strokes, paralysis, weakness, swallowing problems, and death are rare but possible. Some tumors involve specific nerves in the posterior fossa. For example, they could start at or put pressure on the hearing nerves or the nerves that control the muscles of the face, swallowing, speaking, and other functions. Hearing loss and possible paralysis of the facial and swallowing muscles may be more likely in a case like this. Your surgeon will tell you what to expect. The CSF, the fluid that surrounds the spinal cord, may leak under the skin and even to the outside. Another operation may be needed to repair this fluid leak. A CSF leak can also cause headache, nausea, and vomiting every time you sit up and elevate your head. Be sure to tell your doctor if you notice these signs after the operation. After the operation. After the operation, you may be asked to lie flat for a few days. This is to make sure the dura or patch, as well as the muscles covering the cerebellum, heal properly and prevent a fluid leak. The nurses will check the function of your arms and legs repeatedly to make sure you are recovering and not getting worse. Heavy lifting, bending, or twisting is usually not allowed in the first few weeks after surgery. Physical therapy may be needed after the operation to help you strengthen your muscles and help with balance and walking. Depending on how much physical therapy is needed after the operation, you may stay from a few days to a few weeks in the hospital or in an extended care facility. It may take a long time to recover from the weakness and symptoms that you had before the operation or that have happened since. For this reason, it is very important for you to follow a strict physical therapy program to help you improve. You should be sure to call your doctor if you get a severe headache, fever, new weakness, or notice fluid leaking from the incision. All of these may be signs of serious complications. If your tumor was malignant or cancerous, your doctor may start you on chemotherapy or radiation therapy to try and kill any leftover cancer cells. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Conclusion Brain tumors in the posterior fossa are a serious condition that can affect many body functions and may also lead to death. An operation to take out the tumor is usually successful in treating severe symptoms. This operation is relatively safe. Risks and complications are not common. Knowing about them may help you detect and treat them early if they happen. Thank you for using Explain.